Uh, when we first started, when I first was looking at, um, you know, a program to pilot uh, with the students with disabilities, um, at that time the graduation rate for students with disabilities uh, in New York City was 6%. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something that I wanted to change, right? And when I started talking to you earlier, I was talking to you about a student right now who is 18 and is, and is in ninth grade, right? And so when things like that happen, it hurts my heart because I am truly in this business for students. My name is Joy Valley. I am with Triple SL for District 29. District 29 is an urban school district located in Queens. There are approximately 28,000 students enrolled in 36 schools. Our schools comprise of 63% African Americans, 15% Hispanic Latino, 16% Asian, and 10% and 6% other. Our school district comprised of about 25% special education students. It was a feeling that our school district needed additional supports when it came to our special education students, so our administrative team decided on working with Max Scala to support our students in sets, and we're working on expanding to our self-contained and ICT classrooms. Now let's hear from our teachers. My name is Corinne Stevenson Griffiths. I'm from PSIS 295 in Queens. I'm basically just going to start with the data that I've analyzed based on the program. Um, here we have the comprehension um, averages for main ideas, identifying details, making inferences, compare, comparing, making comparisons, and the vocabulary. So as you can see, all of the students combined had very high averages. There's no failing average there. Okay, so the data shows that the middle school students are doing well in their skills. These are all of the skills also that are, they're standard, standardized based skills. So if you look into the standards, you'll see all of these skills mentioned in the standards as you go down the list. So that's why I appreciate the program because I'm very into standard based instruction. So it's aligned with that and that's a great thing. I have one sixth grade student who went from a level five to six to seven now. And she's a sixth grade student, but she's on level seven. Wow. I have another eighth grade student who has moved from zero to four, five to six. Wow, sixth grade levels. Yeah. Um, and here, we also use performance series. So my students had great gains also. Can you uh, share it? Yeah, sure. So my eighth grade student, he moved, he had a 2,617 in the fall. You're supposed to, you're supposed to compare the fall score to your spring score. The middle, they don't, they don't uh, calculate the middle. You know this is also used for our advanced rating. So the games help me out too. <laughs> <laughs> I need my advanced rating to be highly effective. Um, so this child has 2,617 in the fall. Now he has 2,919 with a gain of 302 points. Wow. I also added the math scores because they made gains in math. We do know that the math state exam it's is a reading test. Every, it's all reading. Right, so math now. matters in this situation as well with Max Gala. Okay, good morning. My name is Jessica Schlesinger. I am the SETS and IEP teacher from PS181. Um, so I've been doing Max Scholar since November, and I've been working with fifth graders, second graders, and a kindergarten student. Um, all of their FMP levels have gone up, some more than others, but I had students go from M to O, O to Q, T o to Q. Wow. O to Q, T to U, K to P, and A to D. I'm Tara Holmes from Susan B. Anthony IS238 Middle School in District 29. Our population is 47 set students that Mr. Joseph uh, shares with me. Um, we started in November and we teach 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. So We highlighted um, the, the people, the students I have highlighted over here, those are signs of definite growth. Students who have gone from one level to the next and for the most part, everyone has shown growth. 
but I just, uh, uh, Ms. Holmes and I, we indicated that the kids who have shown the most growth. We had a student, uh, his, um, his starting level was, his, his assignment level was level two, and he went up to uh, a level three. We have also have gotten back to him and uh, there have been times we're just walking down the hallway and uh, the teacher may say, hey, that kid improved. What is he doing? What's going on with him? He's improved. <laughs> and, and we've been getting a lot of that late interest in this one. Hi, my name is Daniela Napoli and I'm a teacher in the school, PS 138. Uh, this year I had a sets group that I used Max Scholar on and they were Fifth, grades, fifth graders and one fourth grader. Um, over here on the left side, I have the pre-test levels that we started out with, along with the interim that I gave this week or last week. Um, so one student was a level two, ended up a level four, so went up to two levels. Another one was a level four to a level five. Um, my biggest one was a student named Brian who went from a level three to a level seven. I have another student who went from a level two to a level three, and my last student went from a level three to a level five. So we spent a lot of time in max reading this year, and then um, just on the right side, I have how they finished in all the different um, skills when answering the comprehension questions. Um, sure, uh, my one student got an 81 in comparing, but 95s in the main idea, detail, inferencing, and vocab. Um, my next student got 100% in vocabulary, and then between 87 and 92 in the other categories. Um, and then the student that made the most growth, and I think what really helped him is, uh, in the levels 5, 6, and I believe 7, it was definitely more interesting topics on the passages for him. He really liked the, the, the ones about the apps and the sports. Um, so I think that definitely helps me working with that student. Um, he got 100% in everything except for vocab, where he still got a 94%. Um, my next student, I don't know why the little charts didn't come up, but he got between an 80 and a 90 and everything. And my last student got between an 84 and a 92 in all the categories. I didn't know they were doing anything important, so I didn't even look at the computer. When I wanted them to write on this, what, what uh, they like about Max Scholar and how Max Scholars help them. One of them said, Miss Nebe, I'm not the one with behavior problem, um, challenging behavior. She said, Miss Nebe, I'm not gonna do it. I already did mine on the computer. I said, that doesn't count. What did you do? So I said, let's finish writing. And they did this writing in just two periods. Imagine getting kids to write in two periods and copying out the third period. They surprised me. When I looked at the work, I, I read, you see how, what they write. You will see in the video. So Cassidy, Cassidy, your turn. Please read in your work. Max Scholar helped me with my reading because when I first started, I was reading very slowly and I couldn't spell words that well. But now I can read much faster and, and I can spell longer words correctly. Max's words help me by convincing me to spell and learn new words every day. Also, it helps me to try to sound out words and read fluently. I like Max Scholar because it helps me with my reading and writing. It helps me sound out long words. It has what children like. In Max Bios, they have artists that that children like. We can read and learn more about them. Also, they have games that can help you with our spelling. That is why I like Max Scholar. Very good. Hi, my name is Sherry Atlas Miljoner, and I'm from PS35 in Hollis. <coughs> I'm SETS teacher. And my students absolutely love Max Scholar. Um, some days, if we can't go on it because there's something else we have to do, like teach math, they are miserable. They are very upset with me. And when it was the state test and we had to teach math, I had to teach math to them. They just couldn't wait for it to be over. 
when the state tests were over, we had a major celebration so that we could go back on Max Scholarship. Um, there was an, another student, uh, one of our eighth graders, who was graduating this year, and in the beginning of the year, she's very apprehensive of, of speaking in front of the class or reading in front of the class. But she found, through Max Scholar and the highlighting and the phonics, not the phonics, the, um, the prefixes and the suffixes, better understanding where words come from and how they're put together, that she didn't have a problem raising her hand. Mm -hmm. And she liked hearing her voice and people asking her questions. So that really made me feel good because that came out of nowhere. She just, you know, we didn't even go over that. Um, but you'd be very surprised on how you touch the lives of these children where you're just thinking you're doing the reading, but that was a confidence booster because because she understood these words, she was able to parlay that into, okay, I'm going to now raise my hand. Hi, my name is Diane Nunez. I work at Q355. I was introduced to Max Scholar in January. I took over from the previous sets teacher, and I am currently certified to teach Wilson. Um, what I notice about Wilson compared to Max Scholar is um, when I'm in an ICT class and we're working on RTI, a lot of the kids are embarrassed to come in the back of the room and tap out words and sounds. So with the Max Scholar program, um, the kids are excited. Let me introduce myself again. I'm um, Rizzi Hussain from PS136. Um, my demographics is majority fifth graders, couple of second graders, and one um, first grader. Um, if you look at their pre-assessment, you see that they're performing below their grade levels. Some of them are level zero, the majority were level two. And when we do the pre-assessment for for the max reading, it's the same thing. They're performing. What grade below. were those children? The These are fifth graders, second graders, and first graders. So they're all performing that were struggling, that did not want to read the papers, that did not want to make an effort. Just the soul having the technology in front of them got them motivated to at least start. And as time went by, you should have seen them with like proudness about themselves, their self-confidence has improved. Um, these kids started competing against each other. So they're like, Mr. Hussein, can we not do summary today? Can we just focus on the questions and see who does better? <laughs> and we were talking about feedback earlier. I didn't have to give any feedback. They talked to each other. Oh, come on, man. Why you made this mistake? You highlighted this right here. So they help each other. They improve. It's not like I did better than you. They're like, all right, next time I'm going to try better than you. So you see the teamwork build up. So everybody just got a sense of accomplishment. I'm going to tell a secret. I just didn't use it with the sets. I used it with the ICT kids, I used it with, I used it with the ICT kids, I used it with the Gen Ed kids. I have a fifth grader that's 13 years old, was not in the classroom last year at all. Running around the thing, got kicked off the basketball team. This year, every time he got frustrated, every time he got angry, every time he didn't, didn't want anything. Can I go to Mr. Hussein? I'm like, what's up, man? He's like, can I do the Max Scala? I'm like, why, what happened? He's like, I'm not feeling good today in the classroom. You know where the computer is? Get it. I am a true believer if something works well for a student that is struggling, and we're able to change the lives of the students that are struggling by putting in best practices. That is something that can be used or a strategy or a skill set that can be used with everyone.